Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Somachi Chris Asoloka. I'm the CEO of the Tony Elumeli Foundation. I've been told I now have 10 minutes, so I'm going to go through <laughs> go this very quickly. Um, first is some stats as to why Africa is incredibly important. Africa is the world's youngest continent. We have 70% of all Africans aged 30 and below. And by 2050, 30% of all human beings in the world would reside in Africa. Yet, youth unemployment, youth on engagement remain fundamental issues that continue to threaten stability, peace, and security on the African continent. At the Tony Elumelu Foundation, we're turning this around. We don't see our huge youth population as a threat or a challenge. We see it as an enormous opportunity to create prosperity, much needed prosperity on the African continent. Founded in 2010, by founder Mr. Tony Elumelu CFR and our co-founder Dr. Well Elumelu OFR, following Mr. Elumelu's transition as the CEO of the global, Africa's Global Bank UBA. The Tony Elumelu Foundation is the world's leading philanthropy, empowering young African entrepreneurs from all 54 African countries. We're <laughs> We believe that in the 21st century, philanthropy must be catalytic. It must prioritize our young ones. It must give them the tools, the opportunity, the visibility, and resources to create livelihoods, not just for themselves, but to also drive job creation in their communities, to employ other young people in their communities. We believe that entrepreneurship offers the most powerful, the most transformative model to change the narrative on the African continent in our lifetime. Since 2010 till 2015, the foundation has been involved in a number of initiatives. We helped draft Nigeria's Charity Act in 2011. We started the Tony Anawele Academic Prize in 2012, and that initiative helped to support and reward Africa's best graduating student. We had the Blair Lumelu Fellows Program we had the Africa Market Internship where we had MBA students from top universities in the world come to support African startups. We had the CC Hub partnership that Sam spoke about where we funded 20 young startups in Nigeria with over $100,000. We had the Africa Capitalism Institute, a think tank that we put together to help you know, design, curate, and mainstream the Africa Capitalism philosophy. We had a number of initiatives. But I'm very thankful that in 2015, we narrowed down and became laser focused on entrepreneurship. And in 2015, we launched the Tony Elumelu Foundation Entrepreneurship Program with a $100 million commitment from, from our founder and his family to catalyze 10,000 young entrepreneurs over 10 years. Ladies and gentlemen, beyond proud to share that today I stand before you, not only fulfilling that promise, but doubling that promise. To date, <laughs> to date we have funded 20,000 young African entrepreneurs from all 54 African countries, disbursing US $100 million. And I say US, because they're different dollar currencies, so we must be sure of the dollar we're speaking of. This bursting you as 100 million to 20,000 young Africans who today have created over 400,000 jobs across all 54 African countries, generating over $2.3 billion in revenue in over just a few years. With this achievement, we are now validated that our belief as entre in entrepreneurship as the model for transformation truly is correct. You know, a lot of people ask us, and a lot of people ask me, especially when I travel to give speeches around the world, and they say, you know, so much instead of the foundation supporting over a thousand entrepreneurs every year, and you give them grants of $5,000 each, and you give them training and mentorship and coaching, why don't you select about a hundred entrepreneurs in Africa and, and give them millions of dollars each, and don't you think your impact should be greater? You know, and I tell them, the foundation was based on certain things. One is the founder wanted to democratize luck 
and increase access to economic opportunity. We don't want to fund entrepreneurs who already have alternative funding channels, entrepreneurs who would already get funding from financial institutions, VC, friends, family. We want to democratize luck and increase access so that any young person across the continent who, has, who can dare to dream, who believes they have a viable idea, can apply to the Tony L. Mello Foundation transparently and, if selected, be funded, trained, coached, mentored through our program. Two, is that we don't want to only just focus on certain countries on the continent. You know, many countries, Kenya, South Africa, um, Nigeria, will continue to receive VC funding year in, year out. We know that Africa will not be secure if we have a few prosperous African countries and the others still living in poverty. Our vision for the continent is a transformed continent where all 54 African countries are prosperous. So we're not interested in funding viable entrepreneurs in a few countries, but we want to fund entrepreneurs across the entire continent. And then third is we also ensure that we're inclusive. We ensured our entrepreneurs agenda balanced. I'm proud to say that in 2015, we had only 21% women in our program. Today, it's nearly 50%. So we've now transformed the entrepreneurial landscape on the continent to prioritize and focus on women entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs thriving with disability. 23% of our entrepreneurs are actually physically disabled. They're thriving with disability. But what we've shown the world is that this, if you give these young Africans, even if they are physically challenged, the tools, the resources, the training, the funding, they can make magic happen, and they continue to make magic happen. Our entrepreneurs continue to give us the faith that indeed in our lifetime, the continent will be transformed. Many partners across the world have identified the work that we do as revolutionary. So these partners, including the European Commission, have come to the foundation and said, hey, we love your model, we love what you do. We see the jobs you're creating, the revenue you're generating, the poverty you're eradicating, the inclusive, inclusive economic empowerment that you're, 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 you're making happen. And we wanna work with you to scale what you do. You already reach these entrepreneurs, you have a network and infrastructure that works for you. We wanna come and support you to just scale it to reach even more entrepreneurs. So our 20 million partner, um, euro partnership, not dollars this time, euro partnership with the EU in 2021, we've now renewed it this year again. And so they've now doubled that commitment. This is the first time the EU is doubling a partnership and recommitting to a partnership with an African philanthropy, African private sector. We have the United Nations Development. So how much is it now? So Chairman, it was 20 million. We've now done another 20 million. 20 million. Yes. With the United Nations Development Program, we've signed the partnership to support 100,000 young Africans in the Sahel region and across the continent. This is a huge, huge, huge landmark. Because remember, UNDP is one of the world's leading global development agencies for young people. So for them to identify the foundation as their foremost African partner to support 100,000 young people over the next 10 years is remarkable. With the ICRC, and that's Red Cross, but more formally known as International Committee of the Red Cross, we were their first African partners. And as we all know, the Red Cross really comes in in times of you know, famine or emergency, disaster. They give handouts, they give you know, rice, food, injections. You know, you know how they really intervene. But the Red Cross monitored the work they were doing, and they came to us in 2018, and they said, hey, we've never done this before but we're so inspired in the work that, we, that you do that we want to partner with you to see how we can support entrepreneurs and MSMEs. This has never happened in Red Cross history around the world, but we see what you're doing, we see the difference you're making, and we want to work with you to scale that. So today, ICRC, again, Red Cross, remains one of our big partners. And the list goes on and on. You know, I tell my friends, that there's no development agency in the world that is really an agency that's not a partner of the foundation. In fact, now, <laughs> now we're, we're, we're very, we're very um, select in who we want to affiliate and co-brand with. We're very um, select in who we want. You know, the foundation's brand has gone to the next level that we're very careful around who we work with and who we partner with. And very quickly, 
I just want to share a few things I get asked. I just want to answer that um, here. Our top 10 sectors on the program, people come to us and say, we know you funded 20,000 entrepreneurs. What are some of the most popular sectors? Um, agriculture, over 33% of entrepreneurs are in agriculture. Um, we have ICT, manufacturing, fashion and the creative industry, education, commercial, retail, healthcare, food and beverage, waste management, and then energy and power generator generation. Those are our top 10 con um, sectors. And our top 10 countries are Nigeria, Mali, Uganda, Benin Republic, Kenya, Cameroon, Rwanda, Chad, Burkina Faso, and Ghana. So you see, it's an even spread across the continent. And when I say top 10 countries, it doesn't mean we're prioritizing these countries. It means that these are the countries that have the most number of funded entrepreneurs in our program. And then finally, you know, um, we're very big on monitoring and, and evaluation. We track every single dollar that we give as grants to these entrepreneurs. We measure our impact. How many jobs are they creating? What is the revenue like? What are they paying in taxes? How, what obstacles do they continue um, to be threatened by? How do we continue to support? We also know that entrepreneurs don't exist in isolation. They need an enabling environment to continue to support them. You know, you can fund an entrepreneur all you want, but if that regulation is, is not um, conducive for growth, then the entrepreneur is not going to go far. So we're also big on working with African governments across the continent and giving them the research, the insights, the data um, that we have to inform the policies and the regulation they put in place in their different countries for young entrepreneurs. We also do a lot on thought leadership. We have case studies by Cambridge University, um, Harvard Business School, Stanford University. Um, when I say this list, people tell me, what about the Nigerian universities? We have a case study in progress by the Lagos Business School. We have a case study already by the University of Cape Town in South Africa. Strathmore University in Kenya is about to publish their case study. And the Gibbs University in South Africa is also about to publish a case study on the foundation. So the work that we do is pioneering in many ways. And we are partnering with these different universities across the world so that we're institutionalizing our learnings. We're broadcasting our successes. We're inspiring other philanthropies and HNIs around the world who want to do good but don't know where to start from. And so we hope that it continues to look at the Tony Elimelu Foundation at that, as that beacon of hope and inspiration, as that role model philanthropy, if I say so, um, to see how they can more support African entrepreneurs. And finally, what's next for us? We're launching, as Sam very eloquently, and I was wondering how he had all that information. We're launching what we call a Coalition for African Entrepreneurs. We've done all this work on our own, largely on our own, but now we want to open the field up and invite like-minded partners from the private sector, from government, from development sector, from social sector, to come work with us and scale our infrastructure so that we reach more young entrepreneurs. We already have the track record, we have the experience, we have the reach, we have the data, we have the entrepreneurs. We're now inviting these um, like-minded partners to come with us and then we are able to reach more entrepreneurs. We set a target of funding 100,000 entrepreneurs by 2035. Our target is that these 100,000 100, entrepreneurs will create a million jobs um, within the time frame of 2035 and generate billions of additional um, US dollars in, in revenue for the African continent. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that is all. I will stop here um, and await any questions. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Oh, yes, of course. So our, our founder, Mr. Tony Elumelu, CFR, our, <laughs> our co-founder, Dr. Awel Elumelu, FR, um, our trustee, Alex Trotter, who is here, I think? Oh, he's, yes. Um, and then we have board members, um, former Prime Minister of Benin Republic, um, Honorable Lionel Zintu, unfortunately he's not here. And we also have Fatu Asa um, as the board director. Thank you. <laughs>